Okay, we are about to begin the soldering process, and um, this is time consuming, um, but this is the kind of the last step to completing these batteries. Um, so the first thing I do is I take a small file, and I, I like to go along and, and sort of get a shiny spot on the top of the copper. Uh, it just helps the solder flow and stick, because uh, this copper does oxidize. Okay, I think we got a, some shiny on all of this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to put a blob of solder down on the top of the battery. Oh, excuse me, I hit the camera. We're going to put a blob of solder down on the top of the battery. For this I just use my soldering station. Um, I have a big iron, but um, the big iron, um, it's kind of large and you kind of gonna you, you you'll probably end up burning the plastic and probably melting some of the shrink wrap so I use that just at the end sort of to flow some of the solder for now I'm just trying to put a blob of solder down on the top of the batteries um, just enough to to hold the resistor uh, you know to hold the the fuse wire and it doesn't have to be um, and, so, and you know this, um, as you lay some, down some of the solder, sometimes it'll come out a little cold and a little peaky, but that's fine because we're gonna reflow it in a second. For now, we're just getting a deposit down of, of solder. A little more, a little more. Okay, fine. Now, how does this work? Okay, we take resistors. And um, I actually buy the uh, metallic resistors um, because they're cheaper than the, the ceramic resistors because all I want is the leg. I'm actually not going to use the resistor at all. I just want the leg. The reason is resistor legs are good for about 4 or 5 amps and then they burn out. And so that acts as a fuse. If this pack starts to push more than 4 or 5 amps per cell, which it should never, the, the, the resistor leg will actually burn out and actually electrically disconnect each battery from the bus bar. So we take the resistor, you know, we take the resistor, we put it in the, on top of the solder, and we reflow the solder on top. Um, and let the let the solder cool a little bit. It's very easy to accidentally pull the resistor leg out, and end or end up with a cold joint. Um, just. You want your solder to flow and you want you know the resistor to be um, in the solder good. Okay, so that's great. Okay, perfect. Those are all in there. Now what we do is we actually chop off the resistor. Because we, all we want is the leg. And the leg is actually the perfect length to make it over the bus bar. Okay, there's the resist. Okay, so the resistors are cut. And then what I do is actually come in with a screwdriver. And I, uh, push, the, uh, I push the resistor leg down on top of this blob of solder. And sort of melt it so that it there we go it ends up inside the um, you know the solder grabs it and holds it you can see that those resistor legs are now um, connected to the, to the both sides of the batteries now uh, just watch your hand you are likely going to burn yourself at some point that's just part of the game here okay uh, these all look good. Now keep an eye out for any peaky solder blobs. Those mean they could be a cold solder. 
and you won't have an electrical connection. The only one that looks a little peaky is this one, so I'm probably gonna reflow this one a little bit and just see if we can get it to spread a little bit better. Um, and yes, there we go, it is, um, it's, it's spread a lot better there. Let me get that solder ball out of the way. Okay, the next thing we have to do is actually solder the resistor leg to the bus bar. This will never, solder onto this. This copper sucks the heat out of this instantly. So don't even try. In fact, I mean, I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Look how peaky and cold those solder blobs are. Um, and they just break right off. It never made, con it never actually made a chemical bond with the, with the copper. It, you need a real big soldering iron to do this part. So that's why I use this thing, this whaler. It's not pretty, but it is a big old soldering iron actually used for stained glass windows. So it's got a ton of heat. And uh, you know, you just sort of put this over the wire here, get a bit of solder flowing, give it a second, and complete the solder, look how beautifully the solder ran there um, and, and made up I made a proper joint there. Let's do it again. A little cold. Hit it again. With a big iron, the, the solder runs almost instantly. Okay. Those are beautifully soldered and uh, definitely good electrical connections. And again, if one of these batteries starts to misbehave, that fuse wire will just burn out and disconnect the battery from the uh, main bus bar and that battery will then be safe and the rest of the pack can continue to function. One last thing, once the, once the pack is built and soldered, make sure you go through and beep out the pack. Um, the reason is, uh, there, uh, as I told you before, you can get cold joints that you don't realize. Sometimes the solder looks like it flowed, but it's just sort of sitting on top of the battery and hasn't actually made an electrical connection with the battery. So once the, once the pack is soldered, go through and beep out every single cell. Okay, good. None on this side. We're going to flip the pack over and try that one more time. And then we will know if the pack is uh, ready and we can start on the next pack. Okay, all batteries are electrically connected to the bus bar and uh, we can proceed with the next pack. 
We just have to do this uh, 1,200 times more and finish seven packs.